All right, I'm back. I uh, took the bodies off. <clears throat> I'm gonna take the uh, motor plate off. And here's where you got to be careful. There's brushes inside underneath the motor plate. You want to keep them in the same position. The front one in the front, the back one in the back. Same thing with the motors, or the magnets. Uh, we have them. They're marked. You can see the white spot there. So that one's going to go in the back. The other one's going to go in the front. Now this is pretty dirty. I haven't cleaned it in probably six months. But you want to keep track of those brushes. They wear in a certain way and you want to make sure they go in the exact same way you take them out. I need some pliers, so I don't have any. I'm just going to have to grab one at a time as carefully as I can. And I have these notched so I know which way they go down. You just take them and rub them on some paper on the side that uh, touches the motor plate. Flip it over, do the same thing, shines them up pretty good, helps with the contact for power. It's pretty good. And that's going to be the back. So here's the front. show you the comparison between a new one and a used one. There's a slight little difference in size. And you'll notice the new brushes, if you look right near the center of it, it doesn't have like a little round circle. The older style brushes, you could see a circle and then inside in the center but it's hard to see on camera because it's so small uh oh I think that was a bad one I didn't touch it but keep my new stuff away from the old stuff let's grab some rubbing alcohol to get all the old grease out of there let's use a q-tip Clean. You don't have to do this every time you race, but that stuff builds up and it'll cause wear. And there's two little springs in there that are attached. That are these pieces, these uh, metal pieces in the center that touch your brush. Don't touch those. Leave them where they're set at at the factory. You can polish them up a little bit if you're careful enough, but it's best just to leave them alone. Take the dry side, dry it all out. This gets all the old settled grease that was in there all cleaned out. It's quite a bit of it. Everything smooth is nice and smooth. And you'll want to get this center hole where the this part of the motor sets in. You want to make sure all that's cleaned out. I just squeeze the tip of the Q-tip, make it a point, stick it in there, and clean out all that old grease. Because that old grease is sort of dried and caked on, and it'll cause your motor to stick and if you're racing to win 
you don't want that. And this is the safest way to do it. If you use any other method, you're probably just going to open up that hole and then your motor will wobble around in it. You don't want that either. Like I said, this was this is from 1970s, so I don't want to ruin it either. Are we going to rule the rolls pretty smooth? These here are old shoes, but I'm going to go ahead and use them because they're nice and grooved. It helps it stay on the track a little bit easier. I will polish them though. I usually take them off, run them back and forth on this, just the part that touches the track, and then I uh, stick it on, stick a, get a Dremel tool and just polish that up with a buffing wheel, one of the cloth buffing wheels with a little bit of uh, uh, 2000 grit liquid sandpaper or some toothpaste. I just put a little water with some toothpaste, but that's all got to be cleaned off. Really good with rubbing alcohol after you do that, if, especially if you use uh, toothpaste because then it just gets sticky. But those are the only two pieces that you really need to polish and, and uh, just this here and where it connects over here. You can polish underneath the, these uh, plates here, but the, you can you risk bending this up and you don't want to do that either. So it's best to just leave everything the way it is. That's what I'm going to do for this right now, unless I have a problem with the track, then I'll open it up, take those out, and give them a nice polish. The motor plate, when the gears, when these gears were off, uh, I only took them off once. I took some, uh, some toothpaste, because I couldn't find my uh, 2000 grit liquid sandpaper, which is basically the same thing as toothpaste except you don't want to put that 3M stuff in your mouth. I just polished this up with, uh, I put the uh, sand, liquid sandpaper or toothpaste, just dab it into the stuff and rub it in really good, make sure it gets on some of the teeth, and then turn the motor on and let those gears mesh in and then everything will run super smooth. And this car will coast down probably 15 feet of track without the power on if it if it's got the speed It'll just coast Which is really nice most cars don't coast that well So this here is gonna have to be cleaned off with some rubbing alcohol grab a new q-tip get these old ones out of the way And I'm gonna have to check this video out and know what's being what I'm able to see because I just had to prop up the camera to that angle so I can get in there. You can't see it on the camera I don't think, but the, you can see where the, over over time of racing and having this lubed up, the grease wears away slowly at the copper and you'll get copper, looks like little copper shavings. That means your gear isn't really meshing up and you should go ahead and repolish it, but I ain't going to touch these ones because they've been running really good for me. And they're original, I don't want to change anything out, just want to keep it all original. Let's get all the grease off of there. nothing to stick. All this is going to have to be every place where these this metal touches the plastic you're going to want to oil. I don't have the right oil so I'm not going to touch it. And this here get all the oil, oil and build up from the brushes off of there. I usually take some, uh, I think this is 2,000 or 5,000 grit sandpaper. I normally wet it down a little bit and try to lightly polish all this off of there. But you really want to make sure it stays perfectly smooth around the whole place. So just cut a little circle, stick it on a tool, and make sure it just gets the whole thing all at once. 
I don't have that tool. But, yep. It's all original. I did mark my gears when I did take them off to mainly mesh because after I meshed them, you want to make sure that you uh, put them back in the exact same spot you took them off. You can see, maybe, I don't know how well it's going to show up. I have a little scratch, a little scratch, and a little scratch, and one scratch on there. So there's a scratch right here, right here, right here, and right here, right in the center. So when this uh, idler gear comes out, I can put it back in the right way so the gears all mesh up. Everything's cleaned. It's going to have to be taken apart again to get it all lubed up. It's the front. I make sure these are back in there the right way. One that came out of the front goes back in the front. One that came out of the back goes in the back. Magnets in first. And unfortunately these magnets just they don't they don't stick in there good. That's just the way it was made at the factory. They just move around and you, it for the stock brace, you can't put any shims in there. So I'm stuck with that. If that was all nice and snug closer together this way, the motor would run a little bit faster. But it's fast enough, I don't need any more speed. It's almost one of the fastest ones on the track. And those notches have to line up sideways with that uh, spring that's down there. I only have two hands and I can't hold the camera or else I'd show you. And it helps if you have some small needle nose pliers, just lightly grab that, stick it right on there and make sure it's perfectly centered in that circle and then you have to put this straight down in and you don't want to force it you just want to set it in there if it doesn't work take the motor off probably have to mess with the magnets again because it'll stick to the metal and redo this and re-align those brushes And the, this one here in the back, even though you put it in a certain way, if you have that notch on there, you can align it up so that the wear on it is going in one direction. If you do that, it's better for getting everything all worked out with speed and stuff. And once you get them in there right, they should sit something like that that around so you can see it. Then hopefully this will just slide right on. Then that gouge will catch on those springs in there. Try not to put any pressure on this because those center pieces will get bent like these ones are and once that happens you'll no longer have the speed in your car. You can try to fix them but it's really a pain. Everything else can be fixed up a little better at the track without having to take that apart again. When this, when a full wheel is put on a Dremel tool, just lightly go over the brush or the sh pickup shoes, like going across with the tool like this, and it'll shine your wheels or shine your uh, shoes up, and it'll slide over the track a little easier. That's it. Uh, it's just got to be oiled underneath the gears. The back gear there. Just one drop of oil on the teeth. And then inside on the uh, inner part. And here where the axle goes into the plastic and the same thing on the front and that'll make everything run smoothly. You got to use the right oil because some of the oils 
uh, they over time they dry up and they get sticky so you want to use the right types of oil and if you don't have any then guys at whatever track you're going at might have some for you they're usually pretty generous with sharing and I'll go ahead and put this back together and turn this off 